Hi, welcome to The Gainsplainer. I'm Jeff The Gainsplainer and today I'm Gainsplaining Atlantis Rising. So Atlantis Rising is a co-op game that on the box it says it plays from one to seven players. However, if you look at the rules, there are different additions to the game or different things that have to happen to the game with one, two or three players. So my instinct is this is a four to seven player game, simply because of those extra rules. The, what I tend to do is look at these games and if they've got extra things, that it tends to be an afterthought of, oh, how can we make this game work for less players to work in the two player situation, which a lot of people play in. And I'm not going to say that's necessarily a bad thing. I haven't played with that. I managed to have a four player game of it the other day uh, to get my head around how everything works. And I really appreciate this game. Um, of course, it is a co-op game. I fear that it falls into the trap of other co-op games with the ability to alpha game the game and tell everyone what to do. Um, I personally work really hard to not do that whenever I'm playing. If you are an alpha gamer, as in someone who really knows them, or usually the person who owns the game, it's a really good idea to sit back and let the other people have their input with co-op games simply because they're not co-op games if you're not doing that. They are games where you're just telling people what to do and they're kind of doing it. Uh, I really, I do actually like parts of this game and when we got to the end of this, the game of this the other night with the other players, we lost. We lost in the same turn that we would have won. So there's a really good balance with that. I played it against myself using four different characters just to get a feel for the game and kind of understand it. And I won. And the I do wonder if having the knowledge of everyone enabled me to do the most appropriate things, whereas having, yes, you've got the knowledge, but you are focused on what you have, changes the way that we approach games. I, th I think that's a really good thing that co-op games should use and can use really well. There's a deck of cards in this game that will come out one card per player per round. So if you're playing with seven players, you're going to get hit seven times with these cards each round. If you're playing with four, it gets hit four times. That's a really good way to balance the level of which the game is played so that a seven player game, because theoretically you've got three extra guys that can do stuff on their turn, doing the those cards is going to make it a lot harder, a lot quicker. The other really cool thing with this game is that the there are lengths of, or sp spikes or peninsulas if you like, of land that you can stand on, the further out the edge of the object you're trying to do is. But as the land sinks, because it's Atlantis, as the land sinks, if you are standing on a piece that sinks, you just have to pull your guy back and he does nothing. That's a really cool thing because it means that you're suddenly thinking, oh, I could stay on the end and, and get the this resource on a three plus or a four plus, but if I do that, it's very likely that I'm going to topple and not be able to get them at all. But in the same breath, there are larger guys that are, enable you to do other stuff. And one of the other things is, if you have to retrieve your guy, you still roll to see if you can get the thing. Yes, I said roll. The game uses dice. So you roll the dice, and if the die roll is of the number on the piece that you're standing, or higher, then you get the thing. Not being a huge fan of dice roll games, this works, it works fine. The, the dice in this game are used to manipulate what you have already chosen to do and so your choice to do things is negating the issues. You can also add some gems to those dice rolls to make them higher and there's some other ways around the dice so I have no problem with the dice in this game while dice in other games may be a bit more of an issue. Look I think I'll leave it there. Please go ahead and watch my games playing games explanation to get a feel for how the game plays and get a feel for if you would like it or not. Uh, if you have any comments or suggestions, please write them below. If you have any games that you would like to be gamesplained, please shoot me an email to thegamesplanner at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at thegamesplanner to keep up to date with the games I'm playing. Subscribe to my videos to keep up to date with the games that I'm gamesplaining. And until next time, enjoy gaming.